Hey everybody, welcome to Trail Live. I'm JB Benna and my beautiful wife Jennifer Benna here hey on guys. Trail Live. Welcome back. Today we are uh, going to be doing a preview of the Western States 100, which is coming up uh, in about three days. Can you believe it? It's here. <laughs> the big day. The big day. So how's your training going? My Jen, training. my wife, who yeah. I don't ever talk to. <laughs> <laughs> my training is a little interesting. Yeah? I've been tapering for a while. Yeah? You got like the nine-month taper going on or I what? I thought that. <laughs> So yeah, Jen is uh, is expecting, and so she's not racing this year. But I am racing, and I plan on winning Western States, so we don't even need a preview because <laughs> I'm going to win the, I don't know, six foot five, uh, 200 pound division. I think you have it. I think it. I got that. I think you have it. I got it covered. And today we <laughs> talked to Brian and Megan from I Run Far, which will be awesome. Today we're going to talk to no, Brian and Megan. I said we're going to talk to him. I thought you said you did talk no, to him. No, we're going to. Okay, well, they're, it, how they're, they're waiting on hold right here yeah, on the computer. On Skype. Hold on. Be right there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, this is getting a little crazy. We better just we get better into the We better go right show. to the show. And next is Lon Monroe and John Trent, who we had on the show last week. And uh, we're going to enjoy some classic stories of Western states. Last episode, we talked about the Silver State uh, 50 miler, which they race direct. John, as I mentioned earlier, is the president of the Western States Board, and Lon is uh, the head of the uh, volunteers. So um, maybe you guys can tell us a little bit about, you know, maybe some behind the scenes stuff, what's new this year, what's happening uh, with the aid stations. And just, I, I know Craig Thornley is now the new race director, so there's been some changes. Uh, maybe just the general uh, feel of the race this year. Mm -hmm. It's quite an undertaking. I mean, there's a there's a tremendous amount of things that go into it that people don't think about. I mean, we're thinking about <clears throat> uh, making sure that we have all the permits that everybody needs. We have to make sure that uh, everybody has their needs filled. Some guys need water jugs. Some guys guys need water tanks. Some people need generators. Some people need need, need you know all these different things. And now the Forest Service, we're we're in a starting to put some porta potties in different spots so how we do that and then we discovered that we could buy get porta potties that are on wheels like we do here they never heard of that down in california so <laughs> i i don't know what they were thinking Reno but now invented but, you know, we, potties on wheels. there we go you know? the progressive center <laughs> we're the, the whole talk about deliverance you know we take ours with us uh, you know but uh that and and uh the amount the amount of supplies we have to buy I mean, we're gonna we're gonna spend a lot of money on just cokes and waters and and goos and I mean we have we get th hundreds and thousands of goos for the runners and 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 uh, it, it's just a lot of stuff you know and uh, uh, coordinating that is is uh, it's really a lot of fun but it's a lot of work but little things like making sure that the sponsors banners get where they should be you know we're we we lost we lost the rope there's this rope that goes across the the river and it's gone it's this huge spool and it's gone so we're going what do we do you know so we you know there's just all these things that come up and all these these supplies and getting the t-shirt orders properly for all the volunteers because we have in western states we have about 12 to 1400 volunteers for 400 runners. It's probably the most supported race in of all in all of ultra running. We have all these agencies to deal with. We have homeowners and we have the forest service and we have Auburn rec department and we, all these different things that you have to do. We have to have highway patrol because we have to try to cross highway 49. Swinging bridge burnt down this year. So we had to create a new uh, river crossing at uh, the bottom of Deadwood Canyon, which is something we've never had to do. So there's always all of these different logistics and the, and the idea is to make it the absolute best run we can have for any runner in the world. We want to be the best race in the world. It's all about making the runner have the greatest day of his or her life, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, it, as the popularity of Western states, there's, there's probably more chances than not that this will be the only time they'll ever get to run the race. So we want to make it as spectacular for that runner as we can. You know, so that's what we that that's kind of what we do. Yeah, and, and John, what about on your your front? What what's new uh, as the president? And yeah, he's with Craig kind of taking over the race directing role. Craig's first of all, uh, Craig's done a great job because um, 
middle of August, we had the American fire down there, which was a, a huge fire. And it, it, it came in and really torched the crux of the course. Deadwood Canyon in particular, Pucker Point. We're so happy that um, things have worked out the way they have. Because there was, we were looking at, at one point, when the government shut down, we were looking at things like, okay, well, if we can't get in there, how do we reroute the course in a way that you basically take out the key part of the course. I mean, will it even be the same race without the canyons involved? Those were some long <laughs> kind of frustrating discussions about what do you do? And right. really we didn't have a ready answer, but thankfully it worked out almost perfectly, as perfectly as a bad situation can. Yeah. So this was the middle of August and you know, Craig and uh, a couple of, the, uh, of our board members, Mark Falcone in particular, who leads our joint trail effort, they've kind of mobilized this group of volunteers that have just been amazing. You know, um, we've worked with the Forest Service, Auburn State Recreation, to figure out a plan to go in and rehabilitate the, 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 the trail so that history wasn't repeated. In 2001, the, the Starfire went into Duncan Canyon, and we, were out of, we couldn't go into Duncan Canyon for six years. It was closed to us. So we didn't want to have a repeat of that this year. But thanks to the effort, 6,000 volunteer hours from January to now, nothing is going to be closed. The one adjustment we're going to have to make, as Lon alluded to, is um, Deadwood Canyon to have to cross the river rather than go over Swinging Bridge. But that effort that, that Craig and Mark have spearheaded has just been amazing. The race will go on the way it always is, a very high level, high quality, and it'll be a great experience for everybody who runs. Well, I, I saw it firsthand. It looks like they've, you guys have done a good job. I saw a bunch of erosion control and the new bridge and the trail. Yeah, it looked totally fine that you're running through completely charred trees, and but I think it's going to be manageable. So great job and getting that all together. I know it's a big effort, and uh, thanks for all your work, and I uh, look you. forward to seeing how the race goes this year. So Thanks again to John Trent and Lon Monroe. And Good luck at the race, JB. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we'll Hopefully a little the, better this we'll time. at the finish. Yeah, at the finish, yeah. <laughs> Up next, we've got Brian and Megan from Iron Far giving us a Western States preview, but stay tuned after that. We're going to have unseen footage from Unbreakable coming up next. Stay tuned. Don't leave. Don't, Don't change leave. the dial. Hi, how are you guys doing? Hey. Good. Hi. So tell us, uh, I guess... Um, Brian, maybe you can just kind of give us, a, to start off with just an overview of, of your thoughts of this year's uh, race. Well, I think it's a special race for a number of reasons. It's uh, the 40th anniversary. Uh, there, there was one year when nobody ran it, but 40 years ago in 1974, Gordy Ansley ran from uh, Squaw Valley to Auburn for the first time. So there's that on everybody's mind. Right. Um, it's the first year of uh, Western States' inclusion in the Ultra Trail World Tour. Um, yet another source of great runners to go along with the Mantra Ultra Cup. Um, so I think there's going to be an increased level of international competition this year. It's not going to be a snow year, so we at least have one thing for certain at this point. Uh, uh, but the competition is great as always, and we're excited for it. So Megan, uh, maybe uh, you could start off with uh, just a preview of uh, the women's race and your thoughts. Well, I think this is going to be a really fun race. Last year, last year everybody sort of called the Western States is any woman's race. The, the field was wide open with uh, the defending champ and course record holder Ellie Greenwood out with injury. And there were sort of a few suspected ladies who, they, who we all thought might show up on the podium, but the woman who ended up winning was like the extreme dark horse, Pam Smith. She finished, I don't know, 38th place, something like that the year before, had a nice you know, walk in after not feeling so good at one of the later aid stations. And she uh, figured out what she did wrong and she uh, did everything right to a T and earned her earned her win last year. So in my mind, I, I see this race as the, as the Pam Smith show with uh, lots of challengers of different kinds behind her. And um, talked to Pam Smith the other day. She's got her cotton shirt all lined up. Nice. She's got her hyper analytical self um, sort of studying all the different details. She probably knows exactly what the weather is going to be like on, on game day. Right, and she seems pretty tuned up and has continued a really solid racing um, streak after Western last year with Desert Solstice, etc. So she's it's not a fluke. She's, she's here to stay. For sure. She yeah. stayed super solid the rest of 2013 so far, 2014. She just ran, a, I think, a 25K tune-up race. Perfect. Um, on a course that 
lots of sort of fast Pacific Northwest women have challenged themselves on when she ran a 13 minute course record over Amy Sproston's previous nice. course record. And that was on the heels of a 115 mile training week. And so that was her last week before going into taper. I, I think she's ready. She's good. <laughs> So who's going to be pushing her? I mean, we've got Nikki, who no one runs with more tough gusto than Nikki. I mean, how do you think she's going to play into this race? For sure. Um, I wouldn't want to have Nikki Kimball behind me in any race, you know, greater than 50 miles. I really wouldn't. Um, well, when I think of the women who are going to be challenging Pam, I break them up into a couple different categories. And the category I'd put Nikki in is sort of the ultra vet category. Right. And the, the two top women in that in that sort of ranking I'd say are Megan Arbogast and Nikki Kimball. Neither of them you really want behind you in the later stages yeah. of a of a race like Western. Nikki's an eight time finisher, a three time champ. Yeah. Megan's a seven time finisher and she just moved to the Sierra Nevada this year. So she basically lives now and trains on the course. That's even more dangerous right. I think. There are some returning top 10 women um, that are definitely worth talking about. Denise Barasa, Emily Harrison, how do you think they'll push the pace as well? Yeah, yeah, so, so sort of the, the next category of women, I'd call them the more of the ultra newbies. And right. you know, newbie isn't a hard and fast word. It's just um, folks who haven't run Western states as much as say Nikki Kimball and Megan Arbogast. And the women I'd put in that category, Emily Harrison, Stephanie Howe, Casey Lichtig and um, Natalie Moclair out of right. France. I think she's definitely one to put in that category. Denise Barasa. Right. There are a few ultra um, world tour spots. Is uh, Natalie, Natalie I think one, is one of, of them, right? She is. She is. And so is uh, Australian Beth Cardelli. And I, I can't really say that much about her. I'm not sure um, how things are going for her. She's a real strong real strong runner down under, but I know she's been suffering from injury and we, we haven't heard how she's doing. Right. How do you think 100 mile experience for these women play into it? I mean, we've seen Ellie Greenwood who came with no 100 mile experience to just dominate that race. Do you feel like any of these women who don't have 100 mile experience are really, are gonna be okay and, and some someone to really watch for the podium? Is there anyone that stands out in that category? Yeah, in that category, I'm keeping my eyes on Stephanie Howe, definitely. I mean, Ellie Greenwood, you know, proved that you don't have to have a hundred mile experience to run a good hundred mile race, and um, so did Rob Carr last right. year. I'm sure we'll be talking about him in just a few minutes. Right. Um, if you can figure out how to put all the puzzle pieces together, um, you can have a good race straight straight out of the hundred mile gates. And um, Stephanie Howe, I think, is about as tuned in as a newbie can get. Okay. She has experience, a lot of experience in the fifty mile distance. She's raced a hundred k. She's been training several times, like a couple hundred miles worth of training on the Western States course, um, suffering in the sauna. Right. I think she's as, she's as tuned in as, as you can get, but I also think that she's um, in, a, in a really humble place mentally, yeah. which is also a good place to be That's a really good as point. a brand new 100 miler. I'm excited to watch her. Yeah, this is going to be a great women's field to, to watch. And I think the top 10 women are, is, could be anyone's game this year, too. It's a little more open with some of the people who are injured, frankly, this year. Eliza's out. Amy Sproston's out. Um, Liza Howard, who I was excited to see run, uh, given her return back, is out. So this, Rory. And Rory's out. So this will be uh, a little bit of a different women's top 10 field, I think. For sure, it's it's definitely a little bit more wide open. There's room for new champions and new podium placers. Um, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't take a minute to mention Emily Harrison. Um, she might be the Agreed. most dangerous um, woman chasing Pam Smith. I mean, she's probably got the the most leg speed of any any woman uh, towing the line on Saturday. Um, and she has a year's worth of experience and right. she had a tough race last year so she's hungry like she she's is. hungry to do well yeah her her speed is translated now into into ultras as she's proven this year so it'll be fun to watch her for so sure. one last thing before we move to the men um who would be your pick for like a you know a dark horse you know the biggest dark horse yeah like who is the pam smith of of this year of this year um, you have to be rooting for that sort of underdog absolutely underdog spirit. The other person I've got my eye on is Larissa Danis. 
Yes. Um, I frankly don't know that much about her, but she's been, um, if you take a look at her results from the last couple of years, she's been on a huge upswing. Yeah. She just ran a, um, a marathon PR, Boston Marathon, in the middle of a bunch of ultra training. So she's got leg speed, 100 mile experience, and right. she's done you know years of ultras at this point. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Jen actually yeah. had a chance to race against her last year at Zion, and uh, she's, she's very fast um, on the flat. So I, I'm going to see how her climbing is, though. I don't think she's done any really big climbing things because Jen was outpacing her on the on the climbs, but uh, Larissa she's very was fast on the, catching yeah. her on every flat. So. She's putting it together, and I think she's after the 2016 Olympic uh, trial marathon. So so it's cool. cool to watch. She's got that Emily Harrison quality to her, and we're seeing more of that come into the sport, which is fun. So. I haven't mentioned Casey Lictai yet. Ah, so, I do agree. She is super strong, super She's fast. On fire. She's going to race a couple times this year. Watch out. Yeah, I agree with that. Totally. She is on fire. She could be a podium runner. Yeah. For, for sure. sure. I agree. So, Brian, uh, tell us about the, the men's field. Well, it's really interesting because there's only one returning champ coming to the race this year, and that's Gordy Ainsley, who won it 40 years ago. <laughs> so. Um, I think we're looking at a new champ. No offense, Corey. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so that's really interesting. I mean, we only have one runner from the top three returning, and that's uh, Rob Carr. Um, so you have Rob Carr, um, Ryan Sands, and Miguel Aras, I think, for me, are three runners who really stand out as a, having a chance to win this year. What um, – I know uh, Rob, you know, has finished uh, – Rob and Ryan have both finished Western States in second. Um Miguel doesn't quite have as much 100 mile experience. Um, why do you think he's uh, up there so much? I know he's a super strong runner, obviously. He's super but... strong. I mean, he's won TNF Endurance Challenge uh, twice. Um, he's run, he started UTMB many times. Um, he was in, in the lead pack to mile 90 a couple years ago when a knee injury took him out. Um, and he was second last year um, in another strong field there. Um, he, I believe he's won the Ultra Trail uh, Andorra. Right. Uh, so he does have a little bit of a hundred mile experience, and he's just so strong. And he has that just the talent we've seen him express in San Francisco a couple times is it's impressive. Maybe above anybody else with experience in the field. So I, I think he just he's he gets injured a lot. He drops doesn't start a lot of races. He drops out of a lot of races. Right. But when he's on. When he's on, he's on. Yeah, he could destroy everyone on a good day. Talk about Nick Clark. I feel like Nick is just right at the bubble constantly. I mean, he's right there. What What do we think Nick's going to do this year? And that's the hard thing is Nick's been on the bubble <laughs> so many times. Is that his potential? He's just running close to it every time? Or is there another step for Nick Clark? Right. I think it's it's hard. He just hit 40. Uh, he's a Masters runner. He said he wants to go after Mike Morton's course record, a uh, Masters course record of 1545. Um He's done a little less mileage he's done in the past, um, just due to life. Um, but he'll, be, he'll certainly be ready. And yeah, that I think, might be a good thing for him. Maybe he's training too much. I don't know. We'll see. And I think last year he'd been sort of super consistent in finishing that fourth, third area at Western States. Last year he was a little more aggressive in, in a super hot day. He paid for it. Yeah. Um, and I think he's going to go back to the strategy that's worked for him and just run a Nick Clark race, yeah. uh, run his own pace. Uh, look bad at mile 20, look bad at mile 40, look bad at mile 60, look bad at mile 80, look bad at 100, and catch people the whole time. He's tough, there's no doubt. What about Dylan Bowman? He's just been having a year, I think. He's on fire right now. Dylan is just a guy who you have to, you want to root for, for number one. He's yeah. just got this infectious personality and is super positive all the time. Um, but he's had a couple good runs at Western States the last two years. Um, with that win at Sean O'Brien earlier in the year, he's shown he can be, he can win a top level race. He's really always run well at 100 miles. Like people aren't going to remember that he's been third and second at Leadville. He's, I think he's won San Diego. Mm -hmm. uh, so even though he's not been on the podium yet at Western States, he he can be up there for sure. Um, and Ian Clark, I mean uh, Ian Sharman. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, after last year, set a new uh, record for the Grand Slam of Ultra Running. Uh, right. Running so well at each of the races, winning Leadville, um, having the fastest trail 100 mile time uh, on North American soil. I think it's one of these years he's going to pop it. Yeah. Uh, Western states, but it's also not not where he really. It's not his 
best terrain for right. him. He's obviously very good at it, very strong at it, but it's just not quintessential Ian Charm and terrain. Right. So can he can he finish second? Can he win? I don't know. Right. So what about Max King? I mean, here we finally get to see him show up to this 100-mile race, and plans are that he's going to run it. What do we think? Max King's going to be there, and I think he'll be there at least mile 50. We'll see after that. <laughs> right. uh, I think he's – He's shown proper respect for the distance. He's had many an opportunity to run Western States through the Montreal Ultra Cup, and Montreal being a sponsor of, of the race. And he's not taken it in the past, um, which he, I think he realizes Western or 100 miles is pretty darn hard. Um, but he also hasn't tailored his race schedule to it this year. Like a lot of the other runners will race a bunch of times leading up to Western States, but those will be steps along the way to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, Max King has been running a bunch of random races, obstacle course races, fast races, um, and mixed in with some really good performances um, at ultra distance, but it's been a mix, and I don't know if that's going to work for me, but he's always been that way. Right. I mean, he's been a non-specialist and found success on the track, on the road, and on the trails without having specificity, so... He's a huge wild card on the day. You think I saw something, AJW might have posted something about the guys who are in the beginning of the top ten, will not, half of them will definitely not be there when it's all said <laughs> and done. So he would know best, I guess, right? Cameron Clayton, do you have any advice for those people? Uh, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, we'll, get right. it. we'll interview him on the next yeah. show. <laughs> Go for broke. Is, is praying for that. That's, yeah. that's his only chance. He's pushing, he's going to egg him on as much as he can <laughs> so he can get that M10 one yes. last time. <laughs> For sure. Right. And there's a whole handful of guys that we haven't even talked about. You know, Dom Grossman, who's been training like a maniac for this race, or Chris Price, who seems to be having a great year. Um, who else is on your on your list, Brian? I mean, I think there's a couple more foreign runners yeah. um, in consideration. Uh, Thomas Leblanche has won Leadville. He's run really. He's won the Tampier in France a number of times. He's got he's got the leg speed mm -hmm. and can still handle the hills, and that's great for a Western States type course. Um, Mike Eich. Is, as I think I wrote in my previews on the steep part of the ultra learning curve, and yeah. if he has his day, uh, and if he doesn't go out trying to set a course record for the first half, uh, he can win it. Yeah. Um, Jez Bragg. Yeah. He's been up in the podium before at Western States. Um, he's won UTMB in a shortened year. I've heard some rumors uh, that he is in shape okay. and ready to go. So. Nice. He's not coming to Dilly Dally around the Western States Trail this time. I'm no. sure he wants to win this thing. I've got Brett Rivers, Dark Horse Top 10. <laughs> 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 Just throwing it out there. Brett Rivers to go for one of those. And he certainly can sneak in the, the Top 10. I mean, there's so many guys. I mean, the Paul Terranovas, the Scott Wolf. The, oh. <laughs> oh, I guess. <laughs> we're in a remote office in a, a coffee shop here in Moab. And, uh, it is game time. I think time. you're watching some World Cup in the other room. Nice. What <laughs> <laughs> about Western States? I don't know. Yeah, that was know. Western States. Woo, goal. goal. Hey, what do yeah, you guys think? Earth. What do you guys yeah, think for, uh, for times? <laughs> Women's times, predictions, and guys this year? I mean, any thoughts? I honestly can't see a course record happening this no. year. I mean, anything's possible, but I just... I don't see the right dynamic on race day. Yeah, I'd say probably mid-15s is my guess, but who yeah. knows. <laughs> Great. Well, any other last thoughts uh, on the on this year's Western? Or? AJW, top 10 or not? Ooh. You can't help but root for AJW. Like, let's let the guy go out with a massive <laughs> display of fireworks. I mean, imagine what he would look like on the finish line if he finished top 10. And then imagine what he would look like on the finish line if he finished M11. Like, I don't want to. <laughs> Either way, he will probably be vomiting at some point. So Speaking of 11th place, Carl Nelson. Oh, I haven't Carl. watched him yet this year, but uh, I think he'll want to be the first woman this year. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I yeah. He won't let that happen. <laughs> AJW going for his 10th. Eric Skaden, uh, a long time top runner, many a top five finish. Uh, I was going first 10, so mm -hmm. another sort of sentimental favorite out there. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Gordy, come on, make it to Robinson yeah. Flat before the cutoff. We are cheering for Gordy. <laughs> One last year. or third, Gordy, come on. Yeah. He's got to do it this That's year. That's like getting a top 10 if Gordy can just make it. <laughs> yeah, that would be huge. 40th anniversary the first time, Gordy. It's yeah. Seriously. It all comes full circle. That would yeah. be awesome. I'll, I'll be rooting for him, even though I'll be 
suffering myself. <laughs> I just hope I, I, just hope I don't get passed by Gordy. How's your fitness? You feeling ready? Uh, yeah, you know, I've kind of taken a different approach. Uh, rather than go for the 21-hour run, I'm just going to try to sneak in under 24 and see what happens. I don't know. So you sort of take the same approach you got your qualifier with. Yes, walk a lot. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Work once, why not do it again? Yeah. Right. How is the high country this year? You guys are uh, up there in Tahoe. No, What's the, how are the trails? It's dry. Clear. Yeah, clear. You know, the. Uh, I was just on the course on Monday with uh, Brett Rivers, and uh, the, a lot of the water is actually already – Dried up. Um, just in, since Memorial Day, it's gotten. It's going to be a dry. And even the river, course. even the you're, we're actually going through the uh, um, Deadwood Canyon, the river, and it wasn't even like cold anymore on Mondays. <laughs> it's like I wish this was a little more refreshing. This feels warm. <laughs> so yeah, it's, well, it's, it's 105. It'll feel refreshing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, yeah, thanks for having us. It was a pleasure seeing Squaw Valley. Seeing Squaw. Seeing Squaw. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> anyway. Up next. Up next, we have some more stuff. What's We've up got next? Um, some unseen, unbreakable footage from 2010, so that should be kind of fun to check out. Roll it. Uh, okay, so how about um, talk a little bit about West, actually Western states this year, and like, um, I don't know. I mean, has this been any sort of uh, goal of yours to do Western states, or what is what does it mean to you to do Western states this year, and what's your what's your plan or your goals for the, the race? Um, I. It's, it's definitely more. I mean, I can feel it being more than just any old race. I've kind of been leading up to it over the past six months or so since I knew, I guess eight, seven months since I knew I would be running it. Um, I've just been telling myself, well, it's, you know, it's just another, another race and not, not to get too, too focused on it and put too much, like, I don't know, I just think that I've I've over focused on some races in the past and I know some other people have a tendency to over focus on specific races and I wanted to avoid doing that for sure. So it's really just been the last five weeks or six weeks where it's really been a big focus of mine, but now I can definitely feel, you know, that it's it's a little bit more potential reward, I guess, as far as how I feel satisfaction I might potentially feel from it than than most races have been but I think I've got myself in a good position to be satisfied you know regardless maybe of of the outcome I mean there's certainly there's outcomes that would be really disappointing but I definitely don't feel like I need to you know to run a certain time or to to finish in a certain place to be satisfied I like most any race I do I just want to have fun and I think just based on the the race itself and the hype and the prestige about it and the, the level of competition that's going to be running it's going to be fun almost no matter what <laughs> on an ideal day what would you what would your ideal day on western you know be um if you had the perfect day you know how would that go i think for me I, I, almost in any 100 i think that the perfect day is when i feel as good or better in the last 30 miles as I did at any point in the race. And I've been fortunate to have that in the, in the 600 milers that I've run. I think I've felt that probably in three of them where I felt the strongest in the second half of the race. And I mean, I think that the Western States course is not probably set up ideally to suit my strengths. I think if we uh, if we started in Auburn and finished up here in Squaw, it'd be a lot better for me because I, I think I do better in the mountains and I do better with the climbing. So it's going to be tough because the, the area of the course in which I can probably take advantage of my ability is in the first half, but I, you know, I want to go out pretty patient and pretty slow and have a strong second half. So I just think that would be probably the most ideal thing for me. It would be some scenario in which I'm able to finish feeling really strong. Come on, baby, let's keep up here. <laughs> Yeah. 
Ricardo. <laughs> That segment was a small edit from the uh, unused unbreakable footage and uh, we are going to be actually releasing uh, periodically little segments uh, to hopefully support the show. Up next, we don't have anything more. <laughs> this is the end of the show. <laughs> We're done. So, thanks. Peace out. See you at Western States, see you at Squaw, and remember, keep your feet on the trail and your head in the sky. Don't fall down. <laughs>